like I have been doing strength and martial arts for a very long time, and then now magically I'm entirely useless against somebody who's been training for like a year. And it's incredibly depressing. And so uh, those are the parts of the jiu-jitsu that always excite me, right? Like if you go and you watch a tournament and you see two guys play 50-50 for an hour and then put on an advantage, it's not all that exciting. It's not like any of us got into jiu-jitsu. We got into jiu-jitsu because it feels like magic, right? Certain things just magically work. And it seems like, why is that so powerful? So that's kind of the theme of this class. Most of the class can be stuff like that, but it's really small changes. It's not like, here's an entirely new technique you've never seen before. It's, I know that technique. Oh, move your hand an inch, and magically works. That's what I hope to give you guys. So if at least one technique, I can give you a tweak on something in your game that makes it work better, then I feel like I did my job. The other sneaky part about it is that by giving it an ambiguous name, I can teach you whatever I want. <laughs> because for years, I've wanted to teach things, and you guys never vote for them. You guys vote for the things that I, I'm like, ah, oh, they're not gonna like that one. They're like, why? And I have something that I love, and you guys don't vote for it. So by saying grappling packs, I can teach anything. <laughs> so, um, some of these things are gonna be before, and so I'm gonna, gonna like, give knots to people I've used them before. So the very first one is super simple, um, but it still feels like magic to me. And that's the feeling I want you guys to get. I actually did this in my Steep Theory class with uh, Giles and Oshkri once, so I'm gonna use them as the UK for that one. Um, because putting your pinky on the floor is magic. This is my first day. You put your pinky on the floor when you are grabbing people's feet, it is magic. And from anywhere, whether you're doing an ankle pick, or you're doing a single leg X, or you're doing anything, if you respect the fact of putting your pinky on the floor, suddenly you just swoops. If you go any higher than that, maybe Jiu-Jitsu works. If you are a giant bull of a human, you can put your hand on the knee and Jiu-Jitsu works, but it's just, it's just how it works sometimes. Like Size doesn't matter. Like, I don't believe size doesn't matter. Size totally matters. It's just not the only thing. It's a variable. So I'm going to start off, I'll use both Giles and then I'll use some one of our resident giant people because Iceland has a nice quality stock and supply of giant humans. I've enjoyed rolling with them all week. So let's start with that. So the first thing we're going to do is just give you this. How are you, Giles? And so we're going to start off not with an actual technique, and this is part of why I love using Giles. He enters the space like no one else. Um, stand up for me. So all you're going to do is get with your partner. You're just going to test their leg. This is not a technique because you would never start a match and just saunter over to your partner like this. This isn't real. But if I want you to get this in your head, um, your partner's just going to stand first naturally. Just stand naturally like that. You're standing it naturally. And we're just going to take our hand on the back of the knee and we're going to pull. And unless they've, this is their first time walking and they're an infant, they should not fall. You move down to their calf, yank, also they didn't fall. You move to their Achilles. This is where most of us grab. It's very close to the ground. Most of us are like, this is where you've got feet. And if you notice, like, if he has balance, he might wiggle, but he's not falling. And then magically, we're going to take our pinky and hit the floor and we're going to pull and it moves. Now, I chose Dallas because he had good enough balance that he didn't eat it. But sometimes, be careful with your partners. It's very unsettling. Like, as humans, we're not accustomed to one of the legs of our table being taken out that rapidly. So don't do this if there's people behind you. So we're going to do an example of what I think I have. Stay right here. Stay right there. Stay right there. Stay, 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 stay there. Stay exactly where you are. I want you to come here. You're going to stand, stand right behind me. No, you stay here. You stay here. <laughs> and you're going to come here. You're going to be his partner because this is the kind of way that you guys arrange yourselves when it's time to do drills. Come on your knees. Sit down on your knees. Perfect. You're here. And then I'm in the other group. And I'm like, this is a really good idea. Okay, Giles. One, two. And then he's going to eat it and he's going to headbutt them and then everyone's going to get injured. So please, before you do the knee, first and standing, turn around and be like, is there someone behind me? Oh, there's someone behind me. Maybe I should move. I know this seems really simple, but I don't want any concussions. So the entire drill is this. Three steps. Thank you. <laughs> You're going to come, grab the knee, yank. And so if your partner moves on the first ones, then they're a bad partner. I, I, I'm not saying, but like, they, if they fall down, that means they're acting for you. We don't want stunt doubles. We don't want, like, Steven Seagal, UK is doing beautiful backflips. We just want someone with a base. Good. 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 And now, I actually, for whatever reason, when I hit my pink on the floor, I feel like I do better. Like, if I just come right here and try and yank, I've, I have a, what's called a pressing force. I don't want that. I want to have it kind of in motion as it hits him. 
So I hit the floor with my pinky. And I move it. All right, so you want to hit, pull. Um, don't spread your fingers, because then you will break your pinky. <laughs> so don't do that either. Have your hands together, hit the floor, pull. Sorry. And this is why, this is why I chose Jobs, because he has an excellent balance. So you, some of you will fall. So find an area that's all it is. One, two, three. So, um, we're going to give you a few applications. Um, somebody over here was talking about how foot sweeps work in judo, and they're exactly right. This is the exact same reason why, if you ever did a traditional judo class, they have you do this. Because they want you to have that same contact with the floor. The very base of things, we're hitting it perpendicularly. If you want to get nerdy about it, when you hit above, there's two vectors of force, right? From here, a part of my arm will naturally be pulling him into the floor and adding more, more friction on the floor, uh, adding more friction, and making it harder for him to move because there's a vector of force of my arm that is going both down and this way. When I hit the floor, I can't go any lower. So it means all the vector of force I have are either just coming this way or maybe even a little up. That's why it's worse. Yeah, I screwed up. Very cool. So now, take your pick of your technique. Single X. Ooh, I can teach a second piece of magic at the same time as the first. <laughs> you have to it. So, next piece of magic. So, um, it's all about, um, can I find a polite way to say this? Um, I always say this politely, and this is a weird thing. I think about jiu-jitsu people is that if I say this politely, you will do it wrong. But if I say it in a vulgar way, you will do it right. And I don't know why. But I'm going to give you guys a shot. I'm gonna give you guys a shot of being like, you know, clean, pure, you know, Mormon, if you will. All right, so I want you to take your, uh, your seam of your pants and make the seams of your pants, your clothing, touch the back of their knee when you're doing single leg X. So you're gonna lay down right here, get as deep as you can. We don't have to have a good entry. We're gonna make our crotch. So see this? And we don't want this. I don't wanna put my foot up first. I wanna raise up like I'm going for a triangle or something and consciously touch him with the seam of my pants. I should not be able to see the seam of my pants. All right, and then from right here, I am going to tip him over. Now here's the really important part of this. If I let my butt sag, and I try to keep the balance, he's going to pop and walk and walk. That's what everyone does. Everyone walks. Everyone can do this. We've all done single legs and they're like, it doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. Now look at the difference. If I get my crush all the way up, and I touch him, and then I tilt, he moves. Now mind you, this size does matter. So part of the idea is that he is, his legs are short enough that I can reach. Who's the tallest person here? Living in the area. Stay for here for a second. There is a limit where if they are so tall that I physically, my crush can't reach his knee, then you no longer have business. Let's see if I'm tall enough for this. So I'm up here. Oh yeah. So see how I've got my crush touching his knee? Even if I tilt, he's just gonna stop him. So for people that are this tall, I have to add a second step. I have to peel his foot off the floor first. So actually, let's rotate. If everyone could join Florian real fast, because the action's only really one spot on this one. Action, you have to be able to see his foot. All right. Cool. You guys are so awesome. I don't actually move because those are usually one person like screw. It, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> All the way up. So see, see how I bent his knee? I've done it so high up. Now look at this. I'm going to push him this way for a moment. I've taken his foot off the board. Now I'm going to take my elbow and I'm going to peel and bend him. Right. So as I extend up, I'm going to turn my hips that way. And a hundred percent of the time, they will go down. Now, come back, the only danger part, thank you for being so tall, I appreciate this. <laughs> is that when you're right here, if you're at a super strict tournament, as you're doing this, they're gonna disqualify you for reading. But it's only if they don't like you, that just happens to me. Um, if they like you, <laughs> um, you will not be disqualified. But the whole thing is, I just wanna get the foot off the floor. Raise it up. I'm gonna grab right here, and look what will happen to my arm, I'm gonna Dig it in, and we go down. Now, how is it the same thing I was talking about? Well, after you asked. Stay right here. Last time, 
We wanted a vector force that came right here who's on the floor much. And we're going to yank, right? So it's a nice test because you're very big. Hopefully this works. It does physics work on much people? It's no slides. So what I want you to practice, you get to practice both at the same time. I'm going to put this leg down. I'm right here. All I want you to do, here's the caveat. Put your knee past your toe. Knee forward. Once his knee goes past his toe, this becomes very, very hard. Very, very hard. Even as high as good as I am at this, he's too strong. I will fail. But the cool part of this is the more he puts his knee over his toe, his leg's available. If you go into old school jiu-jitsu, if I have two feet, he falls. Bottom heel. Whoop. So that's the whole thing. You have to, you're going to make always the, how they defend your first technique will give you access to your second. Pre, he's probably said the words jab cross a hundred times at this camp already because it's a very good concept. John Danaher uses the expression dilemma. They are all very good. They're not exactly the same, but the whole idea is that I want to organize my jiu-jitsu in a way that when I do one thing, his best response to that one thing will help me with my next thing. And it's not exactly a hack, but it's a concept. Hacks for me is just how I get you in the door. Right? Everyone wants that quick fix. But what's going to get you through the long road of jiu-jitsu is having big ideas that you can hang your techniques on and organize them in your head. So what do I want you guys to do? The first thing I want you all to do is practice getting your seams on here. I'm gonna, this is my second attempt at being like not vulgar because I want to I believe you guys can learn without vulgarity. So whatever reproductive organ that you possess between your legs that should physically be touching the back of their knee, if you feel whatever goods you have in there are lonely, you're doing it wrong. They should be touching the back of their knee. All right? So, right here. They are touching it. Right? I pick him up and I bend in. But if they are smaller than you, if they are not super tall, you don't need this step. You can just go. Come in. And now I can even add an extra step of what I can do better put my hand here. We will go. All right, that's option A, come back. Caveat, how do you ruin this technique? You move your knee over your toe. If his knee is over his toe, I'm gonna have a hard time. See, I can still move him, I can still make him wobble. It's very hard to properly speak people who've shifted their weight forward very aggressively. The cool part is, as I make him wiggle, whoop, got an arm. And now I can make him dump. If you have two legs also, same thing. Don't stay high. I'm doing this, keep your, lean forward and keep your balance. Little, how are your hips with your head? Lean your head forward and keep your balance. <sighs> Why? This is inefficient. Get down. Back and forth. Single legs and heel pull. It's shockingly difficult to stand in someone's single legs while they are alternating between these two techniques. One, two, three. Take it, don't, don't move all the way back, stay where you are. Oh, this is a quick detail, and it's actually, I didn't mention this because this isn't really part of the magic I was talking about, but if you don't do this, it will fail, so I'll have to show you. Um, everybody, have you ever seen somebody who's like, kind of full of their muscles and they want to like show you about like which way is the beach kind of person? Right, have you ever seen one of these guys like, look at the biceps, right? I want you to channel that person. If you extend this here, I would say channel your inner chat. <laughs> All right? So what I want you to do is to do this, really drive that down into their foot. And so why? You don't have to actually flex and be all fancy, but I want you to get that picture in there. I need something that you don't forget. So think about like which way is the beach, right? Can I bore you? When I'm holding him, if my hand is lazy, he will move his foot and I will not be able to sweep him. So, after I've, I've gotten my reproductive organs on his knee, I'm gonna lift him up. Look at this arm. You're gonna take this arm, and it's just gonna get, yes! And he goes down. <laughs> Next thing that I always actually to tell people, this is my fault, the slight bit of continued extension. I am up here, I don't come down. I stay up as I am rotating. 
Give it a shot one more time. One, two, three. simple again, right? So we're going to keep on going between that was an extension of the concept. You can use this concept everywhere. Every single Deashi Barai Judo Street uses that concept. Every single ankle uses the concept. But I don't want to make this a class on that because this is idea. It's throwing ideas at you. The next idea is one of my favorites. So I like things that allow you to be incredibly annoying. So I got to a point at my gym at one point in time where I, I was a brown belt and there were just a few black belts at the gym that just, they would always beat me. I could not submit them, but I could annoy them, and that was enough for me. <laughs> that was enough for me, right? So you have to take your victories where you can. Fine, you might be a white belt, you might be a blue belt, you're not going to beat everyone in your gym, but if you can be a pain in their ass, that's enough. <laughs> so um, this is something that's really, really simple. Um, you can do it with, with my taco grip, which I'm a fan of, which I will share as well, but you don't need to. The whole idea of this is understanding balance. So. Um, I'll use Jaws again, it's really useful by all oh, this great dexterity and coordination. So, if um, Jaws is on his butt, you know, as, as coordinated as Jaws is, there's really only, now mind you, there might be some super like Peking acrobats person who defies this rule, right? There's always like, people at the extremes that will be able to break these rules, but the most people you deal with don't have that extreme level, like a professional gymnast, or someone who's on like, so you think you can dance, one of those people, maybe they can do this. But generally speaking, if Jaws' foot is above his head, he will have a hard time standing up. He can stand up, right? Watch, hop up, see Jaws, Jaws, do pistol squats and stuff, he can stand up, come back down. But if his foot's high and I also start driving forward, Jaws trying to stand up, he's gonna keep falling down. Look what he had to do. Thank you, guys, I chose you. He has to turn around. The only way for someone to stand up while you keep their foot higher than their hips or higher than their head is to turn around. It's the only way. Now mind you, like I said, there's probably someone who will show you another way, but the only way that most regular humans will do that is by stacking down. Same thing, same, I know it's the same thing that I do. Giles is doing the same thing for me and I'm trying to stand up and he's walking backwards. I have to flat my foot. So I just start showing Giles my back, which means that he's got <laughs> a good back take system, or even a good light block entry, this is bad for me. But the way that I love using this is just to annoy people. And so that is literally any time that someone would sweep me, I would just hold their foot up. And then they wouldn't get their sweep. And they'd be very annoyed. So let's imagine that rolls are reverse. Giles catches me. He, does, he hits my ankle and knocks me down. Oh no! So as he's getting up, all I'm gonna do is just pick his foot up. And now Giles, now we're gonna uh, stop. Try and set up, Giles. No point to Right? And the reason why I, I came up with this was because I was a leg locker back when it was very frowned upon. And I would lose tournaments. I would be ahead, I'd be winning, and I wanted to submit the guy. I didn't want to win on points. And so I would jump in here and I'd fall back for a leg lock. And they would stand up. And the referee would be like, two! And then I would lose. <laughs> and it would suck. Now, so that one is that if I play that game and I sit down and I see Joe sitting up, I can do this. And then I can stand up. And then I get the guard pass. And I get to win on points. And I don't want to win on points because it, it hurts my soul, but it's better than losing on points. <laughs> right? So I'm showing the example of these sweeps, but literally think about it like that. Anytime that you've been swept. If you can find their foot and hold it up, they're gonna have a hard time getting up. We'll give you another example. Uh, go ahead and scissor sweep me. Giles, scissor sweep me. He's trying to get up. I come here, he's not up. He might be on top of me, but he's not all the way up yet. Go sweep for you. See, and I made the mistake of saying you can turn around. Most people just fall. But we've got an acrobat, so this is part of why I chose it because I'm not going to injure you. It's very useful. So, um, same thing, butterfly swim. I have my foot up, I screw up, I get butterfly swims. What is this? He has the inside control of my leg. I've taken the inside control of his leg. And so before he gets up, we come back. None of these things 
our victories. They're just not losing. But on the other way around, you can use this as a period in your sleeps. So whenever I sleep someone, I hold their leg, and then they don't get to do this to me. Right? So um, a good example of this, so I'm gonna be fancy. I'm fancy. I'm fancy. So, right here. What are you doing with flower sweep? Flower sweep isn't a fancy, but I like it a lot. And this will lead nicely into my next hack. So I like cohesion. We come in here, we do our flower sweep. By holding this foot up, Jal has a hard time. Now mind you, I'm choosing someone very dexterous and flexible who's smaller than me. So I'm gonna use my resident giant person. Where did you go, sir? I appreciate you last time. There you go. <coughs> what is your name, sir? Pizza. Pizza, thank you very much. So as you can see, his legs are a wee bit longer than Jal's. And I got a chance to use the phrase wee bit, so I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> Have a seat. I died the first time I visited Charles. Charles, when he said, we lad, I'm like, he really says we lad. It's real. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was just completely cartoons. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> All right, so from right here, I come across, um, generally speaking, I prefer doing this when I can get under that, that leg, but this is just a, a regular, you guys have all done the flowers, so there's a million ways of doing it, but there will be a detail that I'll show you later, but the key thing is that keeping that arm up. I turn around, and we're over here, right? As I'm coming across, maybe you guys can see what I'm doing differently. I don't know, sorry about that. Uh, probably you're off balance, so this is kind of a point. But <laughs> I'm over here, I'm gonna swing my leg around, but as I come up, I'm holding this leg. Here's a critical moment. As you can see, I'm on my hip. I have a choice right now. I can try to come up to my knee, or I can stay on my hip. In the moment that I try to come up on my knee, that's his chance to drive back into me, right? But if I stay on my hip and I come through, I win. If I try to do this, just push, push, push forward, uh, push your hand, okay, push it, and then why? Everyone look at me very closely. Thank you so much, it was perfect, perfect illustration. Everybody look at this. So more physics for you. The smaller the lever, lever that you are rotating about, the less force that is needed. If you ever sat on a, uh, if you were really bored at an office job, and you sat on one of those chairs and you had your hands out, and one of your coworkers spins you, and then you pull your arms in, and you spin away way faster. Have you ever done that? Or you guys actually work for your money. <laughs> <laughs> I spin in office chairs. Who <laughs> really want? All right, so if I have my hip down and I turn over, this is very efficient. A very efficient turn, and this is how I think you should all be turning anytime that you're doing a flower sweep because there's no speed bump. When I come here and go over my knee, this is one of the most unathletic motions in all of jiu-jitsu. I come here and I really want to get up, but as much as I'm a break dancer, I've been doing martial arts since I was three, I'm very fit and coordinated. This is not efficient. Humans are just bad at this. I have to lift the entire my body at the end of a lever, the length of my femur. It's very inefficient, and this is most likely if you've ever done a flower seat where you fail. You get right here, and you're like, I'm gonna sweep him, and then he's like, no, you're not. And you get stuck and you fall, and life is very sad. Extend your leg. Now this just looks weird, right? It's not a, not a motion you see a lot in martial arts. It looks a lot more like something you would see in a, in a, in a dance show or something, where you're coming through here, like, just looks a little off, right? <laughs> Right? But that's what we're doing. Extend your leg and roll over your hip. And then once you're on top, then you bring your legs in. So we'll have everyone just do this real fast, and then we'll get back to the whole holding the leg thing just because I've kind of taken you guys into left field. So we're right here. You're gonna try to roll over like this, and then roll over like this. Right? Then you're gonna have your partner assist you. you want to All your partner's gonna do is just push you with a few fingers. I'm gonna be on my hip, it's just to stand right here. I'm gonna try and get up, just to take your fingers and push my chest. And you're gonna realize that he can stop you very, very easily. And keep pushing. And okay, like, good for you forward. Good. And then I put my hip here. He cannot stop. And try it both ways. Try that out. One, two, three.
All right, guys. Now I want you to act well. That's what I do. I want to stick with these ideas more than the next, but I still want to have you guys actually try the flower soup. So um, I'll use pizza. Go back to our pizza. I'll write to the large human. All right. So. Little details that I like. I really like momentum, right? I like momentum and I like gravity because I don't have to exert myself for them, right? If you've ever lift weights, it's all about isolation, but making your life hard. This is the opposite, making your life easy. So I don't want him to post, so we're gonna start our technique out just with me holding. There's a million ways of doing this. I'm not trying to give you the perfect flower suit. I just want to change this one detail. So whatever flower suit you use, do it your way until we go over our hip instead of our, of our knee. We hold, we can put our foot here if we want, maybe you don't put your foot there. We're cutting an angle, right? And once you cut the angle, I like to have momentum. I don't want to just put my foot right here and go. I want to give a swing, right? I told you I did break dance, and it's kind of like break dance. I swing through to here, and I leave my foot flat, and I'm dumping it into that hole that I created. If I didn't do this, you would just post, and this wouldn't work. I have to have this on across. I can hold it right here. I'm also a fan of holding things like this, but how you hold it, not what I'm showing you right now. What I'm showing you is this. I'm winding up and I'm coming down, right? I'm chopping. And as I chop, I'm coming over my hip. You see how my leg is flat? I do it on the other side once so you can see, and then I ride up. I'm letting my hand be loose. For those of you guys that are kind of sadistic, you can hold your foot right here and then come the nasty stretch, and your partner hates you a bit. But if you're kind and have a soul, stay back here. <laughs> but I know that some of you have lost that a long time ago, and I'm not judging. So, do it again. Other side, so you can see my hip. Did I mean to butt through the exact same way? We'll find out. So, I'm holding it right here. So, Florian, is this any better for you? No, okay. <laughs> Over here, up. And I'm swinging through, like so. It's going, I'm tipping him there. My hand is over here. Notice he has the heat pants on, but I'm not grabbing it. You could grab the pants if you want. But that's not the part of the technique. The life, this is not a perfect flower sweep. I just care about the hip and the butt. I wind up. I swing down. He's in the hole. This is the moment we care about. As you can see, I did do it right good. You can see my hip is on the floor. And I almost want to go belly down. I can even hike to here and make it better. Most of all, And on my elbow, and slide over to here. And this is where you're going to be. And then we slide up and do it. So give it a try. Flower sweep. But go over the hip. Don't go over the knee. If you want to feel the pain of going over the knee, have your partner drive into you at the second you put your knee up, life will be hard. Do the same thing on your hip, they should not be able to stop you. One, two, three. teaching more than three things in a class, but the reason why I'm kind of giving you so many today is that they're very small and they're on video, so you can go online and look at them later. In a regular class, I would never ever teach this much, but right now, I'm just, I'm just trying to be a stone in the pond. I want to make a ripple in your mind, so if you didn't get one of them, then don't worry about it. I want, you to, I want you to take one home and go to the three-hour home for math and be annoying with it. Just take one. And so we're going to go back to that, uh, that ankle from the very beginning of class and show you how I use it when I actually roll. And I like to be annoying with it. So we have the concept of picking on the floor. And so instead of an ankle pick, we're going to do what I call the hip push. So we're going to do it together, which brings me to my next concept, which is called opposing forces. And it's all over jiu-jitsu. It's the idea of doing two things in the opposite direction and kind of knock people out. Like, oh, I love human shows. And I love that I get Jocelyn to do it. Jocelyn, can you please stand right here? Just stand right here, stand, stand tall, stand straight. Yes, sir. And you're going to close, don't, 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 don't look behind you. Nothing bad thing happen. Just stay right here. Beautiful. Uh, and I borrow you, sir. Can you please, can you please do, do this? <laughs> All right, so you guys remember when you were in middle school or high school or grammar school, and there was one kid in the class who thought this was hilarious. The whole reason why it works is that there's one force right here, and as he tries to step backwards, there's another thing blocking it right here. And I think this pretty decently expresses the concept of opposing force, except 
he's not moving. For it to be really truly opposing forces, when I said go, he would have to roll into Giles' legs. But in the sake of safety, we're just gonna do this once because I trust that Giles can break fall and be fine. That's it. So, why am I doing this? One, it was fun. Two, this. <laughs> so, how does it fit here? So, look, on a Kimura, we've all done a Kimura and probably done this. We've all just pushed. And look at look at this flexible, dexterous person. Giles is going to hop around like a jumping bean, and I'm not going to get it. Oh, he's going to keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. And now I'm going to all the trouble because all I did was push. And you're like, but Charles, you didn't use your guard at all. It's true, I didn't. But the point is, that even if I have my guard, Look at how far I can push his arm. Look how annoying he is. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Come back. But if I add, instead of just pushing, the idea of a pull simultaneously, suddenly this gets way stronger. I'm pulling the shoulder as I push his hand. Actually, ironically enough, even though I teach this, I was ruling with Paul, and he showed me an Americana that uses the exact same concept that I was doing. So. You know, we can all learn. So um, <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where you want to take these concepts and look all over your jiu-jitsu to make them work. So even though I've been using this concept like Kimuras for years, I wasn't using them in my Americanas. And that's like the most obvious extrapolation between Kimura and Americana, but I hadn't done it. So drag it in and push the hand. So what does this have to do with sweeping? Stand back up for me. In the beginning, all we were doing was pulling. And I can make his foot move. Well, if I add this idea of pushing as well, things get a little more interesting. And this is something that I actually use when I'm rolling. I use it in this moment, usually I'm sitting on my butt, and maybe I sit that down for Jaws, and that Jaws and I were here. Something just happened, and he's trying to stand up. As he stands up, and all the way up, I immediately see a vulnerability. Whatever leg is in front, I'm like, oh, look, this is gonna be great. And I come, and I can just put him back down. It can be there, and that was me using my cross hand. It works just as well as the side, but it's immensely annoying. But the cool part about it is we get to extrapolate that concept I told you earlier, which is notice how he's bouncing back. This is part of why I chose him. Giles can just keep bouncing. But I don't want him to bounce. I want to keep him down. Stand up for me again, sir. And so I'm right here. I slide in. I pull him down. Walk towards him and move his leg up. No, stay here. Stay down. I want my two points. Right? And so, if he gives us back, fine, but I want to stay up. So all we with your partner, and we're going to add, is this idea that I come up. So as I'm, as I'm, as I'm, as I'm doing it, it's this. And I know that I'm kind of like, contradicting myself, because didn't he just say that this is the worst motion in all jiu-jitsu? Kind of. Notice on this one, I'm taking my hip laterally. This is a long lever. By bending this up really tight, now my hip is only going a very small distance. You see how my hip is now almost on my ankle? And so this height that I'm moving over, is only the height of my thigh. It's actually still very small. When I'm over here, the height that I'm going over is the length of my femur. It's very, very weak. So for me, this is the most efficient way to roll over your knee when you're trying to be aggressive. Retreating, we do this. Advancing, we bend that foot and we can roll. So notice it's not, it's not this, right? Remember the warm-ups from the beginning of class? It's not this, that's kind of slow. It's really bending it in tight and doing that. Um, if you have an injured foot and you can't physically do this, then you can just do it the slow way. You can sit on your butt, knock them over, and then stand up. That's all I want you to do. You're on your butt. Boom. So we're gonna try that, and you can try that in the air a few times before you go to your partner. So all it is is we bring our feet in. Notice my foot's not too close. Can't get up now. This one is super close. That one's a little far. Not straight. That's also hard. Bent a little bit. This hand is gonna pinky hit the floor and punch the hip. Now we're up, and then you just walk. I don't care about how you fold up. You can learn how to fold up later. That's not the point of this. The point is this idea of look, they're not getting back up. Be annoying. And your partner will hate you a little bit and you'll get back up. Because that's what I want you to do. I want you to be annoying. If you can do this in class like three or four times, even better. You do this once, you knock them down, ha ha ha, and then you sit back down. And then you do it again. <laughs> Your partners will hate you, but you'll get really good at it. Remember, you don't have to drill during drilling time. You can drill during open back. He says no. <laughs> he thinks you're rolling. 
This is my favorite way to drill. Because you know it works. He thinks you're in a match. And I know that I'm drilling. Let's have fun. All right, let's move. One, two, three. Really important detail. Don't push up. Can I get a bar you? He's a Giles-esque person, very balanced. If I come here and I push up, you get into this battle. And now you're in wrestling single leg finishes, which is great, but that is an entire world of understanding. Like, this is a lot of like technicality. We'd be good at jiu-jitsu, we're good at wrestling. I mean, that's cool, but I don't want to have to be good at that. I just want to win. I just want to win the butt. When I'm pushing, I want to push down. As I sit up, I drive my head down, pushing down with the heel of my palm. And then I don't have to have that whole battle up there. Now, if he turns around and stands up, like pops up like this, well then now I have to do it. But still, that's two steps for him instead of one. The reason why that happens is that I wasn't violently pushing his leg up enough. Alright? Have fun. One, two, three. So now we're gonna do some other things that, that are now just, just fun. So most of the stuff in the beginning, I believe you guys can actually use. This is something that you can use eventually, but at the beginning it's just, just to enjoy your partner. So um, I'm gonna do it with two people. Um, I actually like you, I'm gonna use you this time, but first I'll use Giles, just because I had Tall and now I have someone who's nice and Jack, so I appreciate you being here. Hey, how are you? So this is called the Taco Grip. I teach this as often as possible, one, because I love tacos. Now I understand tacos aren't as popular out here, so it's whatever pita or tortilla-esque snack that you enjoy, imagine that's what you're holding. So it could be a pita, it could be a duna, it could be a shawarma, whatever it is, but it's something, or a falafel, something that you do this with. So whatever in your life you enjoy it. even a hot dog. Could be a hot dog, but hot dogs you hold a little softer. Right? Whatever you want. Good. So, Giles, Giles' foot is going to be the tortilla. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna take his toes, and I'm gonna bend them together like this. Right? So why am I doing this? Anatomically, the reason I'm doing this is that Giles' quad is very strong. Quadriceps are a very strong part of his body. And if I hold his ankle, his quad can come to bear. It moves move around faster. But very, look how strong that is. Once I pass the ankle joint, all the power of his quad is lost in the ankle. So by grabbing this just like so and holding it, Giles, take your foot back. No. <laughs> now, the key to this technique is that I have to hold tight with my hands, but my arm must be limp and be loose. If I try and hold my biceps still, then we'll be able to make a, a disconnected chain and don't, don't even kick it, just, just pull. It will fall out. Because my arm trying to sit still, his leg is still stronger than my arm. My arm needs to slack to move around. So all you're gonna do is grab your partner's foot like this. And why am I doing this? Well, there is no guard. I mean, there are some guards that are one leg, but generally speaking, if I have one of his legs, it's very hard for him to play a guard. It's very hard for him to finish a foot lock, finish an arm bar, finish anything. Do jiu-jitsu. So I just, I just hold his foot and I try to pass his guard. Suddenly he's a lot less good at jiu-jitsu. It's very, very annoying for him to do anything. Even better, if, you, if you're good enough to get both of them. Well, life is pretty awesome now. And I can just walk up to him and be like, Ooh, thank you. But just for now, don't, doing two arms is actually quite hard because keeping my mind focused on both arms and how he's moving is actually quite difficult. So all we do for now is just start off Palm down. Now, where are we grabbing? We don't want to just grab the toes, we'll slip off. We don't want to grab the arch of the foot, it's too strong. We want to take the big toe and the pinky toe and fold them in. And roll them up, just like this. Hold on to them, really tight. And your partner should be in some discomfort. And then just, just try it as a, as a drill. Relax your arm as best you can. Just let your partner move the foot a little bit. Just move a little bit around, move a little bit. So you realize it's not coming out. This move a little more. And now you're just gonna follow him around wherever he goes. Try to try that way. And it's 
fine. But thank you, he's a giant human. Now, here's the downside of this, Hagori. If their foot is so big that your hand can't wrap around it, you just can't do this move. Have a seat. So, like, if you've got little tiny hands, little wee hands, <laughs> then, and you can't reach, you can't do the move. Right? So, if my foot, if my hand is smaller than this foot and I just can't reach, this is, you can't do this move. This move, you have to have someone whose foot is small enough that your hand can reach. Right now, my hand can still reach, but he's stronger than my right hand, actually. I prefer to use my right hand on their left leg because most people are dominant on the right side. And so I'm using my strong arm versus his weak leg. I grab it, and sorry about that, and I'm gonna tilt his foot and make that, that taco again. Hold on, just try and move around. Oh, I'm just gonna chase him around. And his leg is mine now. Oop, I lost it, I passed. So the idea is like, you're not going to keep it forever, but you don't need to. It's just a means of being annoying, but it only works if my arm is relaxed. Once again, if my arm was tense, he's gonna immediately escape. Gone. I have to relax my arm. Right? So at a minimum, I'm making him do something violent to escape. And look, he's all the way over there. Pass his guard. You're forcing a reaction. Is this a pin? Absolutely not. Is this something? No, he'll never get away. Absolutely not, he's going to get away. But I'm going to make him move. Have some fun. One, two, three. All right, guys. So that was a nice little, in my opinion, like grab bag of fun things that are also very useful for your jiu-jitsu. I definitely have more, but I only had an hour for this, and so I got to most of them. I'm gonna give you one more as just an idea. This isn't something that you can do and practice because you have time, but the idea is this. It's something that you're gonna see in judo, jiu-jitsu and everything. It's actually something that I hadn't thought of for a while, but I actually remembered it because I was uh, teaching uh, a lesson to my friend Yusenia. So I will use, actually did you? Did you remember my first? So if you're doing judo, every judo teacher has like been through these pains. Uh, you step, your student steps in, they leave their arm right here, and they try and do an ocean, they do this. And they're trying to break their own shoulder. And then they're like, why does it feel so strong? Right? Same thing in jiu-jitsu if we're doing like a snap mixer. Or anything, if I turn my head, and then I try to turn my arms, I'm very weak. Anytime you're doing anything with your arms in jiu-jitsu, I want you to look at them. I know it seems strange, and if I'm gonna turn, I turn while looking at my hands. And it's shocking how much more powerful it is. With Zudo and with my Oyoshi, I'm going to look at where I'm at my shoulder, and then as I move, I'm going to come with him. I have a nice, beautiful Oyoshi. Maybe not beautiful, but decent. Right? If I go to this next example that Silver Fox was talking about, I'm right here. Right? If I look at my hands as I use my opposing forces, head down, arm up. He will come with me, go to the floor. Another one that you're going to think is very a straight ankle lock, last one, too. If I'm doing a straight ankle lock, like so, and I put my head like this, and I go, ah! He's going to laugh at me and be like, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. But if I come over here and I look at my arms, and I bring my chest into it, and I bring everything with it with me, mind you, I am not doing the best body, I'm not doing any of the best mechanics to my straight ankle lock. On purpose, just to show the difference of if I keep my spine, in alignment with my shoulders, I get a tap. If I leave my head away from it, I don't. That's me making me strong. It works in reverse as well. I have him in side control. In side control. He's a big, strong guy. Give me a big bridge. Bridge. Look at that. Now, this is a version of side control that is just called not being nice. You will not get disqualified if the referee will see it. And also, it's not technically neck cramp. It just taking his spine out of alignment. I turn his neck like so, and I grab his shoulder, his neck is not out of alignment. Show me your strongest bridge. That's it. <laughs> his body is protecting him from paralysis. So just remember this. Your spine and your arms and your head being together make you strong. So if you take that from your opponent, it makes them weak. Remember that idea. That was the last thing I was gonna talk about. Thank you so much for coming to my class.